All right, so Jonathan, you released a video today at HowStuffWorks.com that goes into some detail on how NASA is testing the effects of microgravity in space on sizable fires, large fires, an experiment that they're calling SAFIRE, as in spacecraft fire experiments. Um, would this be the first time NASA studied the effects of a large-scale fire in microgravity? Yes, exactly so. That's, that is the, the purpose of this experiment. It's actually a series of three. So the first one's happening this week or starting this week. Uh, the, the spacecraft that is going to be the home of the massive fire in mm -hmm. space is currently connected to the International Space Station. But that, that will not be the case when the experiment starts for obvious reasons. Oh, I don't understand yeah, this, what you're talking about. This sounds perfectly <laughs> safe to me. All right. So uh, let me let me paint a picture for you, Jason. Right. So uh, you, uh, you have you have you have a space station in space. You have people in space station. Uh -huh. You put fire in space station with people, and that equals bad. I just thought it meant it, the place would be warm. Plus, aren't there suits fireproof? Yeah, They're pretty thick, right? And excellent question that NASA also <laughs> hopes to explore. So yeah, I'm sure. Uh, so part of it is just the question of how fire behaves in microgravity in general. If you've ever seen pictures of some of the experiments they've done with matches and candles, you'll see that the flame around these tends to be more like a globe and less like the elongated teardrop shape we're used to seeing with like a candle flame. Keep in mind, in a microgravity environment, air behaves differently because normally we would see cold air sink down. A cold air is more dense than warm air. And so warm air rises up. But in microgravity, you don't have gravity for denser air to come down. So it actually does behave in a very different way. Now, trying to extrapolate what a large fire will do when you all the information you have are about small fires, I think the biggest fire they ever experimented with was 10 centimeters in size, which is four inches. What they wanted to do was, let's see what happens if we set a much larger fire using a panel of material that's essentially cotton and fiberglass. Um, and the panel will be housed inside of what amounts to a very large box that has two chambers. One chamber is the flow chamber. That's where the fire will happen. The other chamber is where all the sensors and cameras will be to record all the information. Now, this entire box will actually be inside the Cygnus spacecraft. That's a unmanned cargo vessel that was delivering scientific experiment equipment to the ISS. Once it's done, it will detach. It'll end up moving a safe distance away from the ISS and then they'll activate the experiment. Uh, the way they do that is there's actually a wire that runs along one edge of the panel and basic electrical engineering here, you run a current through the wire, it acts as a resistor, it heats up. Once it heats up past the ignition temperature for the material, it will catch fire. And what happens next? We don't know. <laughs> that's, why, that's why we're experimenting. So. It's to see, will microgravity contain a large fire within a, uh, a small uh, space, a relatively small space, or will it continue to spread out? How will the heat expand? How intense will the flames be? Because even if you've created something that's supposed to be fire resistant, it may be that temperatures reach a point where that resistance is no longer an effective uh, barrier between a person and the fire. So this first experiment is really all about seeing how fire itself will behave in a microgravity environment. Experiment number two is going to be when they bring up other materials that are representative of the stuff that you would have in spacecraft and space suits. So that's when they check and see, all right, in microgravity, exactly how fireproof is this fireproof suit? Will it protect astronauts? And the whole purpose of this is that if, in fact, we do start sending people to Mars, for example, that's an eight-month trip one way. And you have to be sure that you account for every potential catastrophe that you can anticipate so that the astronauts have a, the best chance of getting to their destination safely. And then, of course, when they return, that's another eight-month trip back. Wow. So... When you look at most of the stuff that we humans have built, mm -hmm. we've put it through extensive fire testing in the environments that they were meant uh, to exist within. That's not the case with spacecraft. So that's why this is so important. 
So realistically, uh, when will I be able to roast marshmallows in space, in a spaceship? Uh, you know, I wasn't going to tell you this, but <laughs> told that a week from Thursday. Okay. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> some super it, it on the DL from, okay. from NASA. Uh, is there any way that this test could go horribly awry? I mean, the... There, there, there sounds like there's enough kind of ambiguity in the in the process or maybe in the results that it could very, very I mean, one of the outcomes could possibly be a gigantic out of control fire that they can't stop. Well, the, the worst case scenario, truly, as far as I can tell, because, you know, you've got the the unmanned cargo ships separated from the International right. Space Station. So so even the worst case scenario means that you lose an unmanned cargo ship, which is going to break up and burn apart upon re-entry to the Earth's atmosphere anyway. These were designed as one-use vehicles. So it's not like we're going to lose a, a vessel that we had planned to send up again. Mm -hmm. uh, but what, what could happen is if you had a fire that was so intense that it actually uh, caused damage to the sensors, then we might not have any usable data from right. that. That would be the that'd be the biggest catastrophe, meaning that we don't get the information we actually wanted to get. It would also make us seriously rethink what we need to do to prevent any kind of fire situation aboard spacecraft because if that's the case, you really know that fire is intense and and dangerous. Uh the the, the, the yeah, assuming everything works well, the fire will burn maybe up to two and a half hours. That's how long the experiment is expected to take. Really, that that's from beginning to end, testing everything from how long does it take heat to dissipate? How does the heat dissipate? Does it just spread out evenly throughout the chamber? What happens there? And then for the next several days, the, the, uh, the sensors and cameras, all that equipment, the computer aboard will send information down to Earth. And after about a week, after all the data has been collected, they will deorbit the Cygnus, which means allow it to go into Earth's atmosphere, burn up, and uh, whatever's left would hit the Pacific Ocean. Fascinating stuff. Yes. Um, oh, oh, my final question: Are we yeah. about to are we about to find out something that is going to invalidate hundreds of science fiction movies that try to recreate events like catastrophic events in space? That's an excellent question. You know, I think we are going to see something where we learn that fire in space behaves in a very different way than the way we would typically see in science fiction films. So maybe the next time uh, when I finally get my, my pitch idea for Event Horizon 2 to be accepted, I'll have the right way for fire to spread in that environment. That'll be that'll be like your tagline, like the only science fiction movie where, where fire is real or you know or something along <laughs> it, it behaves according to physics <laughs> yes right because there was a scene from the martian where he's trying to burn the rocket fuel to make uh -huh. water and there was a big explosion and i don't know but, if that's how fire would work mars, mars is a little different yeah mars is about a third the gravity of earth so which right. the martian right. did not did not um depict properly in the movie because it didn't look like he was dealing with a third of earth's gravity in that movie yeah, yeah. That, that's understandable considering where they shot it Hawaii, True. Right? <laughs> Hawaii, which has regular gravity. Good yes. point.